Fans of The Last of Us have been searching for any scrap of information on the game's cordyceps infection for almost 10 years since the game's initial release in 2013. As seen in last week's episode, the game starts out much like the television show does because we very immediately jump into the outbreak, allowing little time to learn about a probable origin of the infection. However, co-creators Neil Druckmann and Craig Mazin have both shown that they aren't afraid to deviate and expand on the original source material, as the premiere for the series actually ended up giving us more information than we might have even previously thought, and as the show's second episode continues to explore. Could contaminated flour have caused the cordyceps outbreak in The Last of Us's? As far as Last of Us lore is concerned, the cold start to the second episode of the series is undoubtedly one of the most crucial scenes because it reveals how the virus first appeared. There was a strong avoidance of one particular food ingredient. Flour, as viewers had already seen in episode 1. On first viewing, it might not be the most obvious detail to notice, but after reflecting, it becomes clear that there may be residues of one specific thing that could have sparked the outbreak. In the first 30 minutes alone, there are numerous occurrences of food products, including flour, but none of them are consumed by our three primary protagonists. The three mentions include Sarah not being able to make pancakes because she doesn't have any mix left for Joel's birthday breakfast, Joel not taking the neighbor's biscuits when offered, and Sarah declining to eat raisin cookies when she heads over to her neighbor's house after school. On top of these three individual incidents, a possible contamination of flour is also hinted at heavily in the first episode of the show's follow-up podcast. In the first episode of the podcast, which is hosted by Joel's in-game actor, Mazin himself talked about potential breadcrumbs throughout the premiere in regard to the infection's origin. The cold open to the series' second episode continues to lend credence to this theory, as we see when we're taken to Jakarta before the outbreak occurs. A mention of a worker biting another person at a flour and grain factory raises a red flag, as the previous theories in regard to the potential of the infection spreading via the powder seem to become more plausible as time goes on. Episode 2 of The Last of Us is gives audiences a mini-episode of Chernobyl. Fans of Mazin and HBO's highly lauded Chernobyl will have a lot to be happy about when it comes to the cold open of Episode 2 of The Last of Us. Viewers of both shows should be able to easily identify that the creator of that miniseries is directly involved in the writing of this show when watching the opening, as the fingerprints of his previous effort are clearly evident. The latest episode starts in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia on September 24, 2003, two days before the outbreak in Austin, Texas that we saw in the premiere. This alone is already more information than what those who have played the game were initially given. Ibu Ratna, a mycologist, a scientist who studies fungi, is recruited by the government, and as she stealthily eats her lunch in a restaurant, audiences are given a terrifying, almost procedural peek inside the process. When we see a few soldiers enter and carry her away, the atmosphere is already frightening because of what we know about the previous episode and the upcoming events. Even if we are already well aware of what she might be taken to see, the scenario is nonetheless filled with a sense of dread. This is almost a direct parallel to Chernobyl in the way that we see government officials bringing in a scientist of that particular field to assess what is an already dire situation. It was that aspect of Chernobyl which worked so well, and Mazin's influence and writing continued to clearly carry over just as effectively to The Last of Us. When she finally ends up seeing the infected, we hear that her solution to containing the outbreak is to bomb the city, it's a defining moment, rather than to try and assess the situation and plan for potential cures and vaccines, she knows that the best possible chance of saving the human race is to sacrifice millions of people. It's one of the most chilling scenes that the show has delivered so far, and highlights the mastery of which Mazin already has with the source material, as he continues to showcase his skill at channeling these terrifying quiet moments that he so expertly has a handle on. As fans of the game have already seen in only two episodes, the adaptation of Naughty Dog's The Last of Us isn't afraid to revise and add to its source material. Those who have followed the series for almost a decade have been wondering about Ground Zero and the potential cause of the cordyceps infection. 
To be given that information in such a compelling manner through the opening of this episode leaves you wondering what else Mazin and Druckmann could expand upon in the show's nine-episode run.